What's up, guys? It's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. Of course, we want you to subscribe to us. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of lessons here and get you involved with using your MPC for everything you're doing on your MPC. That means how to use your mixer or how to just drag something in from the browser and get something off your computer or take files from another program you got. Like I have machine, I take samples from machine and use them in MPC and vice versa if I want to. Now this is important for me because I am a recording engineer and I also make up music for film, for commercials, and for artists. Pretty simple stuff. But the problem is when you make that product, you want to make sure it gets to them in a quality file that's not too loud, not too low, and make sure it's just right. Now we're going to start to use some sort of mastering technique on our output so that no matter what we do, we get a really decent sound. So we're going to use expansion packs for this. This way you have them at home, you can practice at home and get an idea of how to actually set up a mastering point for your mixes. Now, I'm using an expansion pack here on my computer, and I can just press X to open or load that up either way. I'm going to go here to Neo Quest, Neo Soul Quest, and I'm going to go right here. I want to hear something back I want to use. That works, right? I thought that was going to work. So let's go back to here. I'm going to go to Sequences, and I'm going to go in here and load that up. This is Dillard Days, and it's in B flat minor. We'll load it up, 89, pretty cool, where we at now, 89 BPM, exactly. So we're fully loaded up here, we've got our samples and our sounds, let's go ahead and see how long this is. Okay, we're eight bars, play from the top. Let's go to our mixer. see here right here bottom right hand side you'll see I have the king crown right here this is my master output and that's uh one and two right master output here and you see the output all these right here the destination is the master output which is one and two and so here's where I want to put my mastering effect at so first I want to put an EQ on top of this I will use a parametric EQ. I'll click that. I'll click it once, open it up. Now I want to add a mastering preset. I'll use the smile, light smile. I prefer to use this to start out with. This allows me to cut off something at the top, at the bottom, and to highlight some frequencies. So in a range of 6.62 kilohertz, it's going to increase by 2 0.6 dB. So it's a shelf here. I'm creating a shelf. Okay? Anything can't get above that shelf, right? And here I have a low shelf. So the top of the high and the bottom is the low. The highs are on top. You'll see these are on too. High, high mid, low mid, and low. So here in the low I have 70 hertz. And the Q is about 1.17. This helps me get that cut off right. And right here, you'll see, I'm only increasing it by 2.2 dB. So let's close this out. Let's get an idea of what we're going to hear. Let's turn this off first and play it back. Now I'm going to turn it on. I don't want this master output of the program to be louder than 0 dB. Prefer to be right around 3 there. Cool. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this dB level, I'm not going for 0 dB. I want to make sure I got some headroom in here. And I prefer to keep it around minus 2 or minus 3. I'll go right here. This is good. Okay, turn it off. You can hear now the difference. Those lows are spread out more and so are the highs. But once I add the parametric EQ, it's 
a little better. We'll stop that. Now you want to add a maximizer. I'll get the maximizer out here. It's in the dynamics. I'll use the air maximizer. Oh, that, that already, as that fades, you can hear it's, it's way too much, right? So we want to go in here and look at this maximizer. This is the init, the initial setup for the maximizer. I don't want that. I'm going to come to here. I want to get to a light mastering. I want to probably bring this up to maybe about 394, 95 milliseconds of release. So it releases it. I don't want to compress it so tightly, right? So now I'm going to play it back from the top. Now I will remove, I will remove it totally. You can hear the difference here. A little lower. I sort of compress it a little bit more. You notice here, between zero and three, nothing's going on. And the reason why we want this, we want to create headroom. It's important. Let's turn this off. I've got to have headroom in here somewhere. It's important. Headroom makes it work. The reason why that is, this space here should be nothing. Because what we want to do is on this, when you play it in a club, let's say you got a DJ friend, you take this file, you want to play it inside his system, right? He has it in there, he's playing it. You want to make sure that he can turn it up loud enough and it can still fill the room up. If it's all the way to zero dB, we got nothing. It's too squashed. It's going to sound distorted when it gets in the club. You want to create the room in the mix so the room happens in the club. Or let's say it's a Jeep and the guy's a great Jeep and you want to play it inside his Jeep. When those clothes are open, it doesn't make a difference. You want to make sure you still got headroom. Now, my thing always is to have one or two DJ friends and have a guy you know who's got a booming system in his car so you can play back your tracks and get an idea how it sounds.